than work due to international remittances. While well, Kenya is the largest remittance receiving country in East Africa, where annual remittances now exceed $2.1 billion. Well, World Remit Research reveals that this rise in remittances has wide-ranging benefits to children's education in the country, amounting to $300 million, approximately 30 billion Kenyan shillings, extra support for education. The findings were calculated using data from UNESCO, the World Bank, and Kenya's latest national household survey. Well, as we look at those numbers when it comes to remittances that are being sent from abroad. Well, we actually have a Kenyan who is making a difference in the United States of America. Many thanks, Alex, for joining us. Thank you for hosting me. Abby, good to be here. Interesting. Well, foreign remittances has had a big impact in terms of Kenya in being able to tap into money that Kenyans working abroad can send back home. We are now talking about uh, 2.1 billion US dollars. And uh, what has been fueling people to send money home? That's a good question. And it's quite wide because the needs of different families are as different as families and social lives are. Mm -hmm. but I think the greatest part of the Kenyan in the diaspora feel as part of Kenyans who just happen to have gone out of the country. And so they, have an, they feel an obligation to send money to support their families be it education-wise, be it social life, all other areas of investment. So I think the driving force is really Kenyans have always felt a need to come back home and they want to do something. By the time they come back, they have a house or they have an investment that they can rely on. All right. Yes. And uh, having been in business, uh, just talk us through what you're currently doing in the United States. I know you are in the logistics business, but uh, how has the business performed so far? Well, Abi, that is a great question. I, again, my name is Alex Karundu. I'm the current uh, managing director and the executive vice president of risk management, which is part of the hiring, the equipment, and the growth of the company. And I've been doing this for a while. Seagate is a company that was founded about 17 years ago. The dream of it started about 17 years ago. Uh, we have grown to a formidable premier company owned by Kenyans. Me and my other three partners, we're four of us, have uh, put an elaborate strategic growth um, uh, plan for that company from a mere uh, 30 trucks a couple of years ago to close to 500 trucks now. So that's what we've been doing. We have employed quite a lot of Kenyans. Uh, over 70% of our employment force are Kenyans who have migrated to the U.S. under different um, agenda, but they find themselves within the logistic industry and that they have found Seagate, their home company. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also involved other East African uh, residents who live in the U.S., uh, the, the, the people from Congo, Ugandans, and the Rwandans, and even Burundis. Besides being uh, an active uh, and illegal company in the U.S., where then you also have to employ the locals within that uh, jurisdiction. All right. Yes. And uh, looking at the growth of the business, uh, I understand there's a plan to actually announce a partnership between Amazon and Posta when it comes to expanding the business and uh, tell us more about this. Um, strategically, we have always, Sigit has always wanted to come to Kenya, either to be involved directly with the brick and mortar and physical equipment for transportation. But we figured out, or when we look at the way the economy is moving, the world is moving to more e-commerce. And there's a huge of amount of Kenyans who are now buying things from online, especially in the Amazon, which is, of course, the largest online trading company. But when it comes to the last mile delivery, Kenyans who are buying items from the U.S. or from the other places that Amazon or any other e-commerce trades do not have a guarantee for last mile delivery. So once Amazon releases the shipment or whatever they are buying, up to a point where they have addressed it to the, U to the U.S. market, there's no coordinate, coordinated process for that shipment to leave the U.S. continent to Africa, in particular to Kenya. So Seagate, which is already an existing, has an existing agency with Amazon. We already do transportation for them, either on the equipment or the deliveries. Found an area where we can now partner with Kenya, because being the, the largest or the main uh, logistic company in Kenya, being owned by the government, or government have a stake in it,
And with the process of discussion between our post office, Amazon and Seagate, and an MOU is being driven. And the, really the purpose of it is that the Seagate is going to be the consolidating hub for all the items coming from the U.S. And coming now, taking advantage of the KQ direct flight that is coming to New York, we can now easily set up a consolidation center in New York. And everything that lives in the U.S. comes to Kenya via KQ, lands to Nairobi, and then post office can do the last mile delivery. Interesting. Yes. So for you to do this, uh, what substantial amount of capital do you need? Uh, we've grown that part of it because already Seagate has an exi in existence the equipment. We already have over 500 trucks uh, asset-based. And asset-based, I'm, I'm talking about the ones that are owned by Seagate. We do have others that are non-asset, which are either contracted or we're already in partnership with those other companies that are within the logistic industry. So we're talking about over 5,000 trucks at large who will serve that or many other areas of the logistics. So we don't have to think of it in a, as a startup investment right now because it's already in existence. What now I can look of as a part of cost bearing is the warehouse in New York because then if we have to effectively deliver, we have to have substance and um, a home consolidated warehouse in New York. Um, it's going to cost a couple of million dollars, but it's a fair deal if that can serve our customers in land. All right. And uh, finally, uh, from you, Alex, um, looking at uh, how you ventured into business and uh, now you are also uh, keen on uh, expanding and getting back home, um, what are some of the tips and lessons that you can share with uh, the Kenyans uh, who are aspiring to come work abroad? Uh, and again, the, dyma the, <laughs> the, the world dynamics are changing. A while ago, this, the diaspora used to be seen as the only source of uh, perhaps freedom and equity growth. But the Kenyan market is ready for a takeoff. So we don't have to really think of a Kenyan moving to the US to make it. You can still make it inland. As long as you have the right information, stay up to, to your principles, work hard, and you don't have to start big. You, if you are thinking of starting logistic and you already um, either have the brick and mortar, you have a simple equipment, it could be one truck. I started Seagate with one truck. So you can grow to it. You don't have to think of big. So my, my encouragement to Kenyans is, number one, you have to have a good character. You have to have a good CRB, what in the US called, uh, we call them credit score, because that allows you to access capital at a very low cost. In our case now in the US, as long as your rating and your, your credit history is good, um, you, are, you, you probably need, can get equipment on zero down payment. In case of uh, Kenyan market, I think the facilities are different. But there's still a lot of opportunities. The key word is work hard, stay uh, diligent, obey the laws. Um, there are regulations, of course, when it comes to tracking and logistic, you have to be compliant. Within the U.S., the FMCSs are very clean, they're very clear. The tracks have to be maintained. Um, you have to, to pay all the, uh, your taxes. And many other areas, it's, you must be complying in compliance. But I think that the real opportunity, Kenya is very virgin as far as logistics concerned. We are also, we're also in the warehousing and fulfillment, which I think Kenya is lacking. We don't have integrated warehouses in Kenya. That's another big opportunity for Kenyans. So, and again, the, the things, the outbound from Kenya is real, is, is real opportunity. Again, it's the, the Agua product. The Agua treat, treaty that was signed a couple of years ago by President Clinton. We have a lot of substance that can come from Kenya to the U.S. And now with the reality of KQ direct flight, anybody that can have an agricultural product, avocado flowers, and name them, there's quite a lot of them. You have a real opportunity to find a partnership in Seagate uh, to venture there, and we're available to help where we can. All right. It seems uh, Seagate is starting off the year on a really high note. We're excited about the opportunities in Kenya and in the, in, in the whole country. All right. We wish you all the best. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Pass our greetings.